Hey guys, it's Gameface here, and welcome back to episode 18 of my Arsenal career mode. Now, in today's episode, I have some big, big games for you. I've got Spurs here, which is obviously a derby match, then Man United after, then Everton in the quarterfinals of one of the cup competitions, and then I've got Real Madrid, and then like Everton again. It's a huge uh, episode, this one, which will be very interesting to see how we get on against some of these teams. I might have to fly through some of the matches uh, quite quickly, so apologies for that. Uh, but there's quite a lot to get through in this episode. Uh, if you could go hit 20 likes on this episode, that would also be really appreciated, guys. Go subscribe as well if you haven't already. And, uh, yeah, that'll be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, let's see how we get on in this episode. We've got a game against Spurs coming up to start off with. I'll change around the team and I'll show you what side I'm going to put out. Okay, this is the team I've gone with. Now, you can't afford to lose these sort of derby matches. So, I've put out a strong team, a really strong team, in fact. Uh, Perriera starts on the left. Other than that, it's pretty much the team you'd probably expect. Uh, then maybe Walcott on the right hand side as well. Uh, but Ramsey had to start alongside Wilshire due to the fact that uh, Ramsey's been in brilliant form recently. So got to keep him in the team. And yeah, let's get on with this match against Spurs. It is an away game. I'll keep the difficulty on professional for now. I'll just change it for, I think, European matches uh, to make it a little bit more tricky. But in the league, I think generally this difficulty has been alright. So we'll keep it on that for now. Let's see how we do against Spurs and hopefully get ourselves three points. I think we're now nine points behind Chelsea, uh, assuming if we win this, obviously. Come on, Pereira. This is our first attack of the game. They have been camped outside our box quite a lot. Pereira to shoot. Good save by, I believe that's Lloris, but I'm not really too sure. It might be Vorm, actually. It is. Uh, they have changed on the team slightly, actually, which is a bit strange considering this is a derby game. And look at that. Is that Jack Wilshire with the header? I think it was. He's beaten the defence to it. And super Jack Wilshire has got himself a headed goal. 1-0. And they were already beating Tottenham 13 minutes in. That's a brilliant little cross there from Sanchez. And Vorm makes a silly error and comes out to try and punch it away for some reason. And Jack Wilson gets the head of goal. 1-0. Walcott's looking dangerous. Here we go. Cuts inside. Back onto his right foot. And oh, I thought it was a goal. And that is it for the first half. That's pretty much the only chances that I've had. I've not had a lot of chances or clear-cut ones anyway in this first half. So hopefully we improve in the second half. It is still 1-0. And uh, yeah, we might need to make some changes. I don't want to make loads because I don't want to get everyone tired because we have a lot of games at the moment. But I might bring on Rabiot a little bit later on. But for now, we'll keep it exactly the same. Pereira to hit one. Also, it's Sanchez. Oh, my days. What a strike that is from Sanchez. I thought it was Pereira initially, but it wasn't. What a hit that is. Into the right-hand side of the goal, and it's 2-0. Brilliant strike. That's only 20 minutes into the second half now. And Sanchez on the edge of the box. We'll have to watch that one back because it was a hell of a strike from him. The corner wasn't great. I mean, Vaughn came out again for some reason and punched it away. But what a hit that is. Brilliant control from Sanchez. And the strike matched it as well. 2-0. I think Sanchez has been a little bit of a disappointment for me this season. And the reason why I'm saying that is because he's only got four goals. That's not a lot considering where we are in the uh, season at the moment. We only have, I think, three months left. So it is a bit of a disappointment out of goals that he's got. Um, I think it's partly because I don't think he plays as well on the left-hand side as he does down the centre. He's currently playing down the centre in this match, so that's maybe why he's starting to get a bit more of the ball, but as you can see a moment ago, he did just get knocked off it, and they've hit the bar, and they should have scored that one. But like I was saying, Sanchez, a little bit disappointing for me. Okay, time to make some changes. We are going to start thinking about the Man United game uh, in a couple of days' time, so I'm going to take off Cavani, and I will also be taking off, mm, I think Jack Will should bring on Rabiot, and final substitution will be Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain on. And I think we'll take off Sanchez. Put Oxlade-Chamberlain out there, I think. Yeah, we'll do that. No way. No way. What a header. And it's Danny Welbeck, I think. It is. Oh, my days. That's come from a free kick, which is miles out. To be fair, it's a brilliant cross in from uh, Ben Davies. And, uh, yeah, a fantastic left foot on that. And Danny Welbeck's headed against his old club into the left-hand corner, and it's now 2-1. Corner, and we are into the three added minutes. Larry, sorry, not Larry, Vaughn is up. Come on, let's just get it away. Get it away, check. Oh, he's punched it. I prefer the catch, to be honest. Or at least don't punch it there. We could have counter-attacked him, potentially. I think Vaughn's going to have got back by now, isn't he? I believe, anyway. Are they wasting their own time? Looks like it here, because... It's just kind of frozen a little bit on me. I'm fine with that. If the ref wants to blow his whistle a little bit earlier, that's fine. 
Now let's try and counter attack. We don't need to because we've won the game 2-1. We've beaten our rival Spurs uh, and that is away as well at White Hart Lane. So we'll happily take that three points more as well. And yeah, now on to the next match. Jack Wilshire accepts the contract and so does Joe Elliott. I believe that was from the previous episode that I possibly should have showed you before the game. Um, anyway, we do have a press conference thing which I delete as usual. And yeah, we will quickly do some of these player drills. So we're we'll back in a second once I've decided on which players I will be doing the drills for. Okay, I've kind of varied it up a little bit. I've mainly gone with really young youngsters here, uh, which kind of, I think, makes sense at this point in the uh, career mode. So I've decided to basically do that. And let's just see how they get on with all the hard difficulty drills. Hopefully they're okay. Uh, as you can see there, my youngster has got very close to 58 overall, and I believe that goalkeeper has got nearer to 54, sorry, yeah, 54 overall, so I think we're doing okay, actually, that was better than I thought, Lopez is getting so close to 75 overall now, uh, I do need to start using him a little bit more, maybe it's that I put him in some cup games, uh, especially next season as well, uh, I'll hopefully be able to incorporate him into the side a little bit more. Uh, but for now, he will be on the sidelines for most of it. We do have the uh, Spain national squad submission coming up shortly as well. And uh, there has been a few suggestions about that in the comments. So I'll get once we get to that, I'll uh, let you know about what was happening in the comments. But basically, we do have the game against Man United now. It's an away match. Where are Man United at the moment? Ninth. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. They are one game behind us. They could potentially go up to sixth if they win this match. Um... I really could do with simming this. I really could. The reason why I say I could do with simming it is because I've got Everton coming up, then Real Madrid, and I need to play the Real Madrid game, and I generally only do, uh, only actually play two matches in an episode. I could do with simming this one, but it is going to be a very risky one. I'll be back in a second once I've decided on the team, and if I think it's going to be good enough to sim, then obviously I'll sim the match. Okay, this is the team I'm going to be playing with. I've tried to change it round as much as possible, uh, while still having good quality plays in there. We are going to sim the match against Man United. Massive risk, and I'm nine points behind Chelsea, but I do need to try and get on with a few of these games now. I can't let this season drag on for too long, because we're near 20 episodes. We're not even past the first season yet, which is unusual for me, so... Let's get a goal. Alex Oxley chamberlain 26 minutes in. I'm expecting them to score, so we need more than one goal. Into the second half, still 1-0 up. I hope they don't score late. That always seems to happen. Oxley chamberlain gets injured, but stays on the pitch. And we haven't got a second goal yet. Come on. Walker comes on. Oxley chamberlain off. They're going to get a late when I can feel it. Oh, my days. We've won it 1-0. We've won it against Man United away. Somehow we got the three points. Risky, but it paid off. And that looks like Chamberlain is only out for two days, luckily for me. While Prass isn't happy with his role at the club, uh, yeah, he will get to play against uh, Everton in the Cup, and uh, in fact, in a day's time. So, yeah, he does get to have a, a match against Everton here. It's not very good, this schedule at all. I've just had one day's rest, and that's it for the match against Everton. So, even though I would like to put in Oxley Chamberlain because he doesn't generally get many starts, he can't because he's not recovered from the last game yet. So, Back in a second, we'll have to side on this team, which can hopefully beat Everton. I really hope this is enough to win against Everton. We are at home, and it is a fairly decent team, I still think. I've just started to play some of the more senior players, potentially, or some of the players that don't get as many games. So that's why Rizitsky's in there, and obviously Arteta plays like that. I would have dropped Czech if I hadn't have changed on the team so much, and I would have put Ospina in there, but... To lose 10 overalls worth of quality is a lot for my keepers. So I'm going to keep checking there. Hopefully he's going to survive this game as well. And we should be able to beat Everton. I still think with this team, hopefully it's not like it was in real life against Sheffield Wednesday where Arsenal lost 3-0. But anyway, Lopez gets a goal in the third minute. We are 1-0 up. That's a brilliant start. And a nice goal for Lopez to kick off his career at Arsenal. Can we get another goal before half time? No, McCarthy equalises. Now we are into the second half. Still one all at this moment in time. But Arteta scores against his old club. And it's 2-1 now. Stones gets a straight red, which is helpful for us. But no doubt it won't actually make things any easier. And five minutes left. Can we hold on to the win? We've got another win against a team, which we potentially found. Uh, kind of got a little bit lucky there, to be honest, didn't we? Um, but... We'll take it, why not? And let's move on to the player drills now as well. Okay, so I've gone for the pretty much the exact same five players, except Mbolo uh, gets into the drills instead of, I can't even remember now, was it Rabiot maybe that I replaced him with? Um, so yeah, this is basically what I've gone with. Hopefully that's going to be enough to potentially see some upgrades in uh, at least attributes anyway. Ian Acho, gone up to 70 overall, and so is Solly, the goalkeeper. 
He's now 54, nearly 55 overall, so that's fantastic. Uh, really looks quite good at the moment, actually, from our youngsters' uh, point of view. So hopefully in the next season, I can actually have a whole cup team that's good enough to get me to the final of a cup, and then obviously we'd potentially change it for the final. But uh, I think we could have a decent cup team in the uh, next season. So I'm really looking forward to that. And we've got the game against Real Madrid now. I will be playing this one. But first, we have to look at the Spanish squad submission that I have to do. And there has been some suggestions in the comments, and one of which was putting Hector Bellerin in the side. Now, I've got Juan Fran, who luckily for me is out for five weeks, so I didn't even know that, to be honest. Um, so that's kind of the easy one to go with and get rid of Juan Fran out of our team and just try and find Hector Bellerin and put him in at right back. Uh, I think that's kind of realistic. I mean, for me, Bellerin's a fantastic player. Obviously, it's another player that could potentially get injured on international duty, but I'm there to risk it. I am the Spanish squad manager, so I can manage how much time Hector Bellerin gets on the pitch anyway, so... I'm pretty happy with that, and I'm pretty happy to do it. And there we go, Hector Bellerin will be in the side. There's actually a lot of right-backs that are better than him in terms of overall, but for me, Hector Bellerin's really fast, he's really young, and he's definitely one for the future. So that's the reason why he gets a position in my squad. Um, also suggested was Fernando Torres. Now, Torres, for me, is one that I'm tempted by, but the only reason why I'd need another striker is if I was to play two up front. And I'm not 100% sure whether I am going to be playing two up front. So... I'll quickly search for Torres. Uh, can yeah, you can search my last name. Um, Torres, and I'm not really too sure overall he is. Is he like 80, 81, something like that? Uh, Fernando Torres, 79 actually. So he's a little bit lower in overall than I expected. Um, will he be good enough? I know he can't really replace Morata because he's such a fantastic player. I don't think Torres will be able to make this squad. So I'm going to say I'm happy with this squad now. I'm not going to include Torres, sadly, but thank you for the suggestion anyway in the comments. These are the players I've gone with. That's the whole squad. Um, I think it's the best squad I could really go with, to be honest, uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. We'll just see how it performs in these international friendlies, I believe it is. Um, but yeah, we'll see how they get on. And Sanchez wants to play against uh, Real Madrid. He certainly will be doing that. Hopefully he's rested well and uh, he's able to play quite easily. Okay, this is the team I've gone with for the game against Real Madrid. Now, you might be a little bit surprised by probably just one player, to be honest, in the team. And that's Iannaccio, starting him up front. Now, I wanted to change it round because Cavani's played quite a lot of games in a row. And I know I have him bow low, but I've decided that it'd be best if I start Iannaccio just to kind of change things a little bit and uh, potentially try and trick uh, Real Madrid's defence uh, into thinking, obviously, it would potentially put uh, Cavani in this side. So, hopefully, they've edited their lineup um, to try and face Cavani and potentially Iannaccio could kind of trick them a little bit and potentially get us a good result against Real Madrid. That's what I'm going for anyway. Um, I'm just going to hope that that does something uh, because he's so fast and he's so young. And I think he could do very well. I've just got a feeling he might be good um, against Real Madrid. It's a bit of a risk, but I do have the other two strikers on the bench anyway. The rest of the team is probably as you'd expect. Let's get on with this game now and hopefully get ourselves a win. What I'm going to do to make it more realistic and due to the fact that I think I won 4-0 in the last leg. Uh, was it 4-0? I'll quickly just check. Yes, it was. I'm all for nil. So to make it more realistic, I'm going to change the difficulty in this one, and I'm going to make it world class. And I'm also going to go four minutes a half as well, just to kind of speed things up a little bit in case I decide to play another game in this episode. Let's get on. Let's see if I can get through into the next round of the Champions Cup. Come on, Arsenal. We are at the Emirates. Uh, we should be able to get a result here against them. We are four nil up from the previous leg, so. We don't really even need to attack. I could have put out a weakened team, actually. I completely forgot that we were 4-0 up uh, until I started the game. So, um, yeah, I think we should be able to get through to the next round. But like I say, I have put it up to world class. So, could be a tough one. Let's see how we do. But hopefully that change in difficulty makes the match a bit more realistic than the first leg. Yeah, in terms of possession, I'm not expecting any more than about 30% at this rate. Because they really have just kept the ball for the first 10 minutes. This is my first real touch of the ball. Um, so yeah, I'm not expecting much possession in this match. It's always so tough to keep it, so um, and win it back mainly. Mainly winning back possession is really tough on this game. Let me know in the comments how you guys do it, because I've got no idea how you win it back properly. Ronaldo on the left-hand side, can he get in a cross? Beats Pereira, still going Cristiano Ronaldo, and look at that from Ceseres. Now I have a chance to counter-attack just before half-time. Let's find Aninacho with the ball. We've really struggled going forward with those sort of passes. They just keep on intercepting them. And that is it for the first half. It's still 0-0, 4-0 on aggregate. Uh, yeah, pretty impressive that first half, actually. It's kind of made me wonder whether I should just play every game of World Class. Although it hasn't worked in the past. But, um, yeah, I thought that was quite a good first half performance. We've not held on 
um, to this at all. We have performed as you'd expect against Real Madrid, so pretty happy with it, to be honest. I think the key to playing well against Real Madrid is keeping the ball, not wasting it in really bad positions. That's what I'm trying to work on, and I think it's something that will improve my game as a whole, but hopefully um, it will lead to me being able to up the difficulty in the future. I'm still getting used to FIFA 16, uh, as I'm sure many of you guys are as well. But this progressive football seems to be working quite well for me at the moment. Marcelo inside, and what a save by Czech. It's very much a similar performance to the one that Arsenal gave against Bayern Munich. We're just looking for that goal now on the counter-attack. It is really working for us quite well. Uh, Ian actually will be coming off shortly, though, because he's struggling to hold the ball, and that's what I've needed uh, rather than pace. It's not been one of those sort of matches. Their defence has been quite deep, so... I am going to bring on someone to hold up the ball. I'm not really too sure who I should bring on. Imbolo is obviously tall and strong, but he's still fast. Ooh, I'll bring on Imbolo then, actually. I thought Cavani was a bit taller and stronger than that. Iacho trying to get past Pepe, and he's won us the foul here. And it's time for Iacho to go off the pitch, but he's ended strongly, actually, uh, in this game. And it will be Pepe with the yellow card. We do have a good free-kick opportunity. 25 yards out. It's a good one for us. Who's our best free-kick taker? Apparently, it's Douglas Costa. And yes, it looks like it. So, let's try and whip it around the wall. Is that too much power? Oh, it's deflected, and it deflected towards the keeper, but it had to be cleared away. Sanchez, fancy feet on his left foot, and that's 5-0 on aggregate. What a strike that is. We've done what Arsenal did against Bayern in real life, and we've played to our strengths. Uh, we just tried to sit back and absorb the pressure, and we've got our chance, and we've scored the goal. Brilliant stuff. Lovely little fancy feet here from Sanchez. And to be honest, I probably should have done a little bit better defending that. But what a strike. 5-0, but 1-0 in this match. And that is it. I have won the game 1-0 in this match. 5-0 aggregate. I think we can all agree that it was a more realistic result in this leg. Uh, pretty happy with that result. 1-0. Uh, to nick it like that, I'm really happy with. So, we'll take that. And, uh, yeah, we'll move on into the next round. No idea who I'm playing. I'll obviously do the other rounds um, actually on World Class and, and four minute half length just because it makes them more realistic. But it looks like we've got Barcelona in the next round. Okay, that is a big, big game for us. Arguably tougher than the Real Madrid one, but you never know. Depends who's playing, I suppose, for Barcelona. But, um, yeah, really happy with that. Do have the game against Everton coming up shortly. Uh, got some players leaving international duty. When I say some, we have quite a lot of players actually leaving on international duty there. Uh, Jack Wilson saying thanks. Same as Sanchez. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll sim on to the Everton match. I don't know if we'll be able to play it or sim it in this um, episode anyway, though. So, we get 3.6 million for we get into the next round. I think we're in these at the semi-finals now, quarter-finals. Maybe, I'm not too sure. Uh, but anyway, that means that now we've got the game against Everton. It's away, and it's another one for us to face to get our old striker. This time it's Giroud, who now plays for Everton, you might remember. 17.5 million I got for him. Really happy with that still. He's 29 years old now. Uh, but yes, we won't be doing this in this episode though, uh, we'll wait until the next time, and yeah, that is going to be it for this episode, we will have also some Spanish matches in the next episode as well, really looking forward to that, maybe I'll play one match uh, of those friendlies, I believe it is, look where we are in the league table, we have two games um, in hand over Chelsea, which could put us on 66 points, which means that we are 7 points behind them. So we've managed to close the gap slightly, uh, but still we don't have too long left now. I think we only have 9 matches left of the season. They have 7 left for themselves. So uh, that is it for this episode, guys. Thank you much for watching. If you do enjoy this, then please click the thumbs up button and also subscribe as well. We really appreciate it. Let's try and hit 20 likes, uh, like I said at the start of the episode. That would be brilliant. Thank you very much for watching and good bye.